everyone and welcome to Garden the Kitchen. Today's episode is going to be about peat moss. Yes, that's right, peat moss. And I've called it peat moss demystified. And the reason behind that is that quite often you're out there shopping for a soilless mixture and uh, you're trying to read the information on the bag and there's nothing there. So today we're going to look at the contents of the bag, whether it's a miracle Grow product or whether it's a Pro Mix and, or another product on the market. And we're going to demystify it so you can understand it. Because coming this, sp this spring, you're going to be down in the big box store and down to the nurseries and you're going to be looking at all these growing mediums that are organic, that are soil, they're soilless, they're compost, and uh, you, as you know, there'll be a lineup as long as you can see, beautifully colored bags all screaming at you, pick me, pick me, because I can grow your tomato plants 10 feet tall. And of course, it gets kind of confusing. So today we're gonna demystify peat moss and we're going to explain exactly where it comes from and what's in the bag? What's in the bag so you can make informed decisions on purchasing the right soil for your particular conditions. So let's get started. First of all, where does peat moss come from? Does it come from a genetically modified organism Frankenstein lab? No, it doesn't. It actually comes from a bog. It's a natural product that grows in a bog or a peat peat moss um, wetland, as you call it. So we have lots of wetlands in actually in Canada. We have over 119 million acres or hectares of peat moss. And actually it represents about 12% of Canada's land mass. Now keep in mind that we only farm uh, less than 1% of the total mass of peat moss and it's closely regulated by the Department of Agriculture. We also supply peat moss to the United States. Uh, we uh, actually export uh, about 85% of their uh, consumed peat moss product in the United States. Who would have thought you know, exporting peat moss, exporting hockey players, maple syrup, poutine. Uh, it's great uh, for Canada to have those exports uh, to the United States and around the world. Actually, we supply about 25% of all the peat moss that is harvested in the world. So anyway, peat moss, where does it come from? It comes from the swamps. It comes from the wetlands, I guess you'd call it the peat wetlands. And uh, wetlands have been growing and multiplying and getting deeper and deeper for over 10,000 years. Actually, these moss plants, which are called sphagnum plants in Canada, and we have over 165 sphagnum peat moss plants growing. And of course they grow during the year when it's nice and warm in these wetlands. And of course they die off in the fall only to be decomposed and then come back and grow the following year. So year after year after year, it's continually growing and these large uh, masses or hectares of wetlands are actually harvested. So in order to harvest them, they have to drain the water off the top layer so they can get in with large tractors. And once the, uh, the peat moss is dry, they use the large tractors with vacuum cleaners, not the ones we have in the house, but huge vacuum cleaners on tractors. And they farm the material and they bring it back and it's all sterilized, ready to go for your potting soil. So it's a great, great product that we have here in Canada and that we export uh, to everyone in the world. And you'll often see it on the bag. Quite often you'll see the Canadian flag, uh, like that one is uh, right here. There's the Canadian flag right here. And you'll often see in the bag that it's 100% Canadian sphagnum peat moss. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I know it can be a bit daunting. Uh, you can look down the aisle and you can see all the different manufacturers. And actually you could see uh, products like Sunshine uh, or perhaps uh, natural and organic potting soil from Farford or uh, perhaps a ProMix potting mix 
or a Schultz uh, potting mix. Those are just some of the manufacturers that are out there uh, to uh, relatively confuse you as you're trying to make those informed decisions as to what you should be purchasing. Uh, even with uh, miracle Grow. Miracle Grow has been around for a long time and of course is one of my go-to products over the years. I really uh, like using this particular product and uh, uh, well just to give you an idea let's take a look at a recording that I made last October. Uh, this morning it's a bit chilly uh, after all it's October the 1st yes October the 1st and you're probably wondering why I'm sitting in amongst a bed of flowers. Well I had to record this for uh, next year because look at the blooms this is October the 1st and flowers we have lots of flowers on the day that was all from miracle grow miracle grow uh, with those flowers so they really produce the flowers the blooms and keeps on going until uh, late October when it's really cold this year I'm going to be experimenting with uh, some pro mix on my right here and uh, just to see uh, if there's any improvement or if there's any difference I like uh, I enjoy joy uh, trying something new uh, getting back to pro uh, the miracle grow here. Uh, if you look in the aisles under Miracle Grow, you can identify uh, lots of uh, growing mediums. Some of them are uh, seed starting germination uh, products that are very, very fine mixture and they're good for starting tomato seeds or flower seeds. There's also the traditional yellow bag, which you see yellow and green uh, potting mix that's available in small or large quantities up to 65 liters. And of course, there's the uh, moisture control potting mix in the Miracle Grow family that's really designed for hanging plants that have a tendency to dry out. Uh, they're great for that. And of course, there's also some organic choices in the Miracle Grow family that you can purchase as well. So that gives you an idea how uh, confusing this can be when you're out there trying to, uh, to make uh, this informed decision. I'm going to, uh, first of all, take you to uh, ProMix because on the bag, on the back of the bag, it tells you what's in the bag, okay? This particular product, miracle Grow, doesn't say what's in the bag. So I'm going to use this one as an example so we can look at the other elements other than peat moss. And speaking of peat moss, I have some peat moss right here. And here it is here. It's nice and fluffy. Matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit in this bucket here so you can see it. There's the peat moss going in and it's a nice brown material and it contains some perlite as well to those little white stuff that's going into the bucket. bucket. And I'll talk about that in a minute as well too. So uh, peat moss, just love the product. It contains or it will hold up to 20% of its weight in water. So that's a tremendous water capacity, holding capacity, that's great for your uh, planting boxes. So terrific stuff. Um, I also, while I'm doing this, I might as well show you the perlite here. There's the perlite. It comes in a bag like this, says perlite on it. And of course, it looks like popcorn or small pieces of popcorn. And I'll just pour a little bit in the bag here so you can see it. There it goes, okay. Well, where does perlite come from? Well, perlite comes from volcanoes. Actually, it's the tailings for the volcanoes when they get really hot and they get sort of like a glassy uh, material. And, it, and it's when it's heated, it explodes into these white particles. So they call that an inorganic product, okay, that's mined from the volcano areas. And this perlite allows the roots to go through the peat moss and uh, uh, and ac have access to the fertilizer and it has a great great uh, water retention ca capacity as well too so let's now that we've looked at those visually let's look at inside the bag so inside this bag of pro mix first of all it's canadian sphagnum peat moss it has a little canadian flag so which indicates it comes from Canada and it contains coconut fiber, perlite, as I just mentioned. It also contains some limestone and that's quite important as well too to know because the actual peat moss has a very low uh, pH level. So pH level is about 4.5. 
and it should be around 6.5 or 7. So what the limestone does is it brings or elevates the pH level in uh, this particular material. So you'll always have limestone, whether it's a Promix or a miracle Grow or another one, you'll have limestone in it as well. And this particular uh, bag has peat, humus, compost, uh, proprietary ingredient called mycortase, and of course it has a controlled release fertilizer and that is the small little looks like eggs but they're not eggs they're actually little uh, fertilizer pellets uh, that actually are slow releasing when they come in contact with water so that's how the fertilizer in the bag uh, is released slowly because it's through the little uh, little uh, seedlings of fertilizer that's left in there. Now, uh, I, I mentioned the NPK. Uh, we have this nitrogen, phosphorus, and K standing for potassium. And this particular ProMix product has a 0.18 nitrogen, 0.104 uh, phosphorus, and uh, uh, potassium, it has a 0 0.10, so it's a little more nitrogen. Now, what's the importance of those particular uh, ingredients or fertilizer? Um, the nitrogen promotes green leaves and stems, makes your plant really strong and lots of leaves for growth. And the phosphorus promotes the flowers, the fruit, and the roots that are growing on your plants. And of course the potassium makes everything work together, okay? Makes everything work together. So when you are checking the bags of peat moss, make sure that you check to see that it has a balanced fertilizer. The numbers should be balanced right across. Anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I hope you watch again, and uh, we'll see you in the garden. Bye-bye.